You're very welcome back this morning. Now, sustainability has become the buzzword in the travel industry this year, with many holidaymakers keen to reduce their carbon footprint while on their annual break. But how can you do your bit to make sure that your own fortnight in the sun is more eco-friendly? Well, travel writer Tom Bannock joins us with advice. Good morning, morning Tom. Guys. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you both. How are you? With Good. the whole uh, green wave, I suppose, that happened in the European elections and local yes. elections. Mm -hmm. It's back in focus again. Massively. Not that it ever went away, but people are more conscious of it again. And we're now all taking our holidays. Um, how do we reduce our carbon footprint when it comes to holidays? I know it's really, I guess, become this huge, massive trending buzzword yeah. over the last year. And I guess we as Irish people were like slightly snookered because now what's happening um, is the whole uh, concept of flight shaming. Yeah. So I don't know if you've heard about this. It's become really yes. big now in Sweden on the back of um, Greta Thunberg, the young environmental um, environmentalist for the for, for climate change. But we live on an island. We live on an island. So what are we going to do? Exactly. Swim? So what can you do? So I guess a lot of airlines, to be fair, um, are really working on their kind of sustainability ethos. Like Aer Lingus, for example, half of their kind of um, their ground fleet now, though all those vehicles kind of taxing around the yes, airports, yeah. half of them are um, are either electric now or run on biofuel. Good. And the airline is really pushing towards more like sustainable fuel options. Um, and I know Norwegian, for example, they were recently voted the most, um, uh, the airline with the least carbon footprint. Now, it can, it can depend, like if it's a, a full Ryanair flight, it's going to be a lot more carbon mm. efficient than like kind of a half of course. packed. But it's good because I actually noticed that when I was booking flights recently when I went on a holiday. And it, it's very easy to see. You can see it. It says carbon your, your footprint, yes. Something, I can't remember what it says, but you're kind of, you know, it's Sesame Street. It's there, it's in front of you. If you want to book it, it's a little bit more expensive. It is a bit more expensive. And I, I'm, I, was, I did a bit of research on this and I guess I'm, it's 1% of travellers actually do pay that little bit extra wow. because, you know, when you're booking a flight, you're looking for the best flair. You're like, it's a... It's a of course, you want to get there quick and easy. Yeah. Will I add baggage or not? Do the last know? thing you want to pay is... Mm. Well, the other thing is, it's like, how do you know it is? It's just saying it is. How do you know it is? Because, I mean, I've been an airports and flights my whole life yeah. you know <clears throat> flights change things change things are delayed how do you know that that flight you've paid that extra money for is definitely the one you're getting on and there's there's also I mean a bit of controversy between behind some of those projects I know some airlines have had to reverse you know if they're teaming together with like a rainforest project in like the DRC or something mm -hmm. then it turns out that all those <clears throat> forests are actually being like hacked down by local authorities oh, and God. then you know so it's, it's a bit of a minefield mm -hmm. and people are even suggesting rather than you know um, offset your carbon emission by paying the extra 10 or 20 euros you know maybe focus on shopping local a bit more when you get to your yeah. destination or but in terms of what we can do Tom, you've put together a few tips for us. And the first tip is travel smart. What do you mean by travel smart? Well, even just in terms of um, packing and with your, your uh, food item previously, yes. I was even another mention for bento boxes. Yeah. So, you know, there's very fortunately all Irish airports now, they, they used to be called water fountains. Now they're called hydration stations. Of course <laughs> so, they are, yeah. <laughs> That's right. So yeah. there's no excuse really anymore not to have to travel with a, uh, a plastic water bottle. You can bring your, you can buy them in like the discount stores or like a your one key or two. Cups. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Or if you want to invest in a more like stainless steel item, and then you can just fill up um, at the airport, and then you're good to go. Similarly, bring your food with you because this, this is great. I really loved that you said this because I bring my own food on ah, flights. Okay, I mean it's a bit of it's, a, bit it a, of, bit? a bit of prep. Or is it's... it not bad? Like, do people think, oh, God, she's they bustling don't with because, your own sandwiches? Let's be honest, in-flight meals, I always find them fairly OK. I'm not the biggest gourmand now, to be honest. They, 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 do, they do the job, but they're pricey if you're... An in-flight yeah, meal typically are. costs about 30 <clears throat> euros if you're adding them and on. not always the greatest quality in no, the world. No, and they're covered in plastic and God knows what, so... And pack clever, you mentioned that already. Yeah, Thomas. so I think the days of, um, in, in terms of budget again, the, the days of the heavy, the luggage are gone, like the Instagrammer who's got like her entourage of like seven yes. bags. This one's just <laughs> for Louis my makeup, Tom's, you know, yeah. it's become a bit of a social no-no now yeah, to travel with yeah. so much gear. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's really, you can pack so m a lot more into uh, the uh, carry-on luggage than you may actually think, particularly for um, a summer destination. Now, if it's skiing, yeah, you're a little bit... Yeah, that day is gone when you have six cases, because if you want to bring six cases, you're paying for five of them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we've kind of been um, kind of horseshoed into becoming a little bit more exactly. budget conscious. And then that benefits the environment as a kind of a offset of that. 
And how can we go green, like supporting, say, even green businesses and things yeah, like that? Yeah, so I was saying how, you know, we've such an opportunity here in Ireland. Like, we're already the Emerald Isle. We've kind of been kind of a bit leapfrogged by Scandinavia and countries like Holland in being, like, the real pioneers of being eco-friendly. But you really see it now with Irish businesses a little bit more who really have a strong sustainability ethos. I know there's places like the 12 in Galway. They have, like, a sustainability philosophy and it's a Gregans and the Burren. The Burren is a really good place. Okay almost made an identity out of being eco-friendly. So what does that mean? I mean, it goes beyond... I mean, we're all sceptical of, you know, please... Uh don't make us wash your towels. You know that. You know those things. Yes. Okay, yeah. Because that, the hotel really to. wants to save their electric, electricity bills there. You know, if they're really worried about the environment, they'd be starting to making a bit more steps. And now they are in terms of recycling. You see, like plastic straws, which is a bit of tokenism, but they're starting to creep in more locally sourced breakfasts. You know, where you know where the products are coming from. And I was away recently, and obviously the, the hotel that we were staying in, all their their vegetables and fruit was all grown on the property. So it's again all organic, coming from the soil. Therefore, better for you, better for them, exactly. um, and it's homegrown. So that's that's another good one. Look out for hotels that have that. For maybe. sure, and we're really lucky in Ireland. You know, you go to the US, and they're like, "Well, this is farm to fork." Like the cow, like grew up like three hundred miles from here. But yeah. like here, we have farm to fork by default. You know, yeah. generally, we're really lucky in Ireland that our produce is so local. Mm -hmm. So we really need to kind of push that. And you, and you get hotels like the Twelve who forage as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they have the exactly. ingredients on It's the almost doorstep. like the next nice. stage of uh, sustainability, yeah. foraging for your own grub. If wow. And that leads us on to be kind to nature. Exactly, be kind to nature. Beautiful segue that, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this kind of kind of comes on the back end. We've all like scrolled through Facebook and then you suddenly see this guy or a couple and they're kind of sketchily rub rubbing some like tiger in Southeast Asia yeah. and... You know, oftentimes, off, yeah. they're off so often they're trying. I mean, you're not, you're not, you wouldn't get so close if they weren't tranquilized. Yeah. So, just I guess, really be aware when you're overseas about even I was in Ukraine a couple of weeks ago and some guy came up to me with those little cute vervet monkeys. You know, you want to hold the monkey? So, no, and thanks. often these have really sinister backstories and you're kind of fueling a kind of a underground um, animal trafficking industry. And sure, but the only the only kind of flip side to that is that like a friend of mine who's a marine biologist, very well-known conservationist, gave me the names of places in, in Sri Lanka. Now we couldn't go obviously because obviously there's been a terrible tragedy yes. with the bombings there, but how do you know that when you're going to this place it has the right kind of system behind it and that obviously it's ethically friendly to the animals? Yeah, I think you're always going there. to make how do you know? You're always going to make judgment calls that maybe weren't the best. Yeah. But I think if you do a bit of a bit do of research, homework. if you do your yeah. homework, if it's one of those elephants on Facebook that's painting with a trunk, you know, you've seen those. Mm -hmm. Like maybe don't go to that one where they're teaching elephants to paint. Yes, but if they, <laughs> not great. <laughs> yeah, no. but um, otherwise, or even you know, swimming with dolphins. You know that that Sea World in the states have been in, kind of under fire in recent years. But that, that, is... lead, that leads us on, Tom, to as Lisa was saying, ask questions. Ask exactly. Questions. When you're going to a resort, yeah. email them before you go and say. Ask the questions you want to ask. Exactly. You know, is it local or even, you know, I often wonder, you know, when they all those, when the air stewards are like taking all their trash, rubbish, like where does that even go? Yeah. So I think even... Well, we're quick enough to email a hotel before we go to say, look, can we make sure there's a, a cot bed in the room for the baby? Email them and ask them the, your menu. Is it local? Exactly. Stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you may come across as slightly obnoxious, but, yeah, I, think but I think it's the way to go. But if more yeah, people do, but more people do, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come, then it becomes the yeah, I think, and it's, I think in Ireland we're in a good position for it to become very absolutely. much... Uh, as your fish degree, farmed or whatever. Exactly, yeah. yeah great tips as always. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to be easy to get through some of Ask loads of questions. We did. Ask we got questions. to the end. Yeah. We did. We did it all. Thank be, you, Tom. Be Good nosy. to see you. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks very much.